I like to think of this drill like you're trying to reach over a Swiss ball so you get that position like that. Don't move this upper part of your arm, okay? So if you start moving your arms around like this, you don't go anywhere. But if you get into this position, you do the arm stroke, you flip to the side, and then you take a breath. Hi, Coach Mark here from Mr. Triathlon. In this short video, what I'm going to explain is the key drills that I use regularly in the swimming pool to improve people's technique, um, why we actually use them, and what equipment you'll need to be able to perform these drills. You only need a minimum amount of equipment, so it's relatively cheap. Okay, so why do we do drills in the first place? So what we use drills for is to mimic a little bit or practice and build up the muscle memory of different parts of the swim technique. And if you regularly practice these drills, then what will happen is that that technique will transfer into your natural swimming um, stroke and that means that you'll get more efficient in the water and much better at swimming. So if you practice the drills regularly, it will transfer into your swimming over time. In, in terms of equipment, there's only two real bits of equipment that I use for my swim sessions. One is the pull boy. So this is normally where you will take this, put it between your legs and just is uh, and isolate the legs so you can concentrate the front end of the stroke without kicking. And then the other bit really is just the, the fins or flippers and um, what we use these for is to give you some propulsion and then you can concentrate on the front end of the stroke. Um, so sometimes people use these and think oh it's great to kick really hard but normally the best thing to do with these fins is to use them to give you that propulsion while you're concentrating on the front end not to try and kick really hard. So the first drill is skull number one and it's so cold because we're going to do skull number one and then skull number two and it's just a position that the muscle memory and the position that you practice within the swim stroke so it's called skull number one because it's right at the front end of the stroke let, let me um, demonstrate the drill first and i'll explain how it's used so with this skull number one what you do is you take the pull boy between your legs push it up as far as it'll go and then when you're doing this drill so don't kick your legs at all um, so you keep your legs nice and still and it's all about the front end of the stroke. Keep your head out of the water, then you don't need to think about breathing. If you do get problems with your back, so if you're in the water horizontal and your head's out of the water and you start to get some back problems, maybe you could try and do this drill um, with your head in the water, but I think it's a good way to practice out of the water. So what you do, keep your head out of the water and then you simply put your arms about shoulder width apart and then it's as though you're reaching over. So your hand, your palms are facing forwards. So your hands are facing forward, sorry, but you're reaching over. Okay, so you've got your fingertips below your wrist, your wrist below your elbow, and you're in this position. Um, I like to think of this drill. I like to think of this drill like you're trying to reach over a Swiss ball so you get that position like that in the water. So it's not flat, it's like you're reaching over. Okay, so what you're doing is reaching over like this and then you try and maintain that position about shoulder width apart and then it's in, in, out, in, out. Simply that drill, okay? And what should happen if you do this drill is when you start having this motion in the water, because of the position of your hands, so not flat, tipped downwards, it starts to pull you through the water, okay? So that's the sensation you're looking for. It's always tempting to try and, you know, you don't go anywhere and then you start trying to pull yourself forward. The idea is to maintain that position in, out, in, out, like this, in, out, in, out. And that hand position on the water is what actually starts to pull you forwards. The reason why we do this drill is it is the front end of the stroke. So as your hand goes into the water, that's the position that you want to get in at the front end of the stroke. So it sets you up for a really good catch. So if you cross over or you end up like this, and so you drop the elbow and you reach forward, it actually generates, it, sorry, it encourages a really good position at the front end of the stroke. So regularly practicing this drill means that your hand goes into the position, into the water in the right position and sets you up for a really good catch. Skull number two. So skull number two, the setup's exactly the same as skull number one. You take the pull boy, put it between your legs, keep your head out of the water. With skull number one, your arms are in this position, right at the front end of the stroke. And what we do with number two is we bring it further back into that swim stroke, okay? If I show you from the side here, 
So what happens is your, your arms are not pointing directly down, they're still slightly further forward. And here, you're just gonna in, out, in, out. The key to this drill is making sure that you don't move this upper part of your arm, okay? So if you start moving your arms around like this, you don't go anywhere. But if you get into this position, into there, and you just skull with the front, um, the, the forearms and the hands, like this, and that remains completely still, the upper arm, then again, you start to move forward. Again, the reason why this is called number two is it's further back in the swim stroke. I'll just take the full way out. So skull number one is at the front end of the stroke, and as you start to pull that catch through, this is where you end, your arm, end up, arm ends up, okay? So hand goes into the water on skull number one, and this is the first position we looked at. Skull number two, you get to this position here, and this is the midpoint of the swim stroke. So again, you're practicing this position, this muscle memory. So skull number one there builds that muscle memory. Skull number two builds this muscle memory here. So the doggy paddle drill. So this is probably one of my favorite drills. Just get the pull boy again. So this one for the pull boy, again, this one isolates the legs. It's all about generating that catch position at the front end of the stroke. Um, pull by between your legs, no kicking at all, legs just completely still behind you. Um, and then what you do for doggy paddle, the main thing for doggy paddle is normally what happens in the swim stroke, if this is the level of water, your arm recovers above the water. What we're looking for in doggy paddle is it goes, it, you, you, uh, you put your hand forward under the water. So doggy paddle that we used to do at school, or I used to do at school, sorry, it was like this. Probably is how a dog swims, just like this. But what we're trying to get to with this is more rotation. So as your hand comes forward, you still rotate shoulders. Okay, so as the hand comes forward, rotate, rotate, rotate. What you're looking for in this drill is to try and feel the water on the palm of your hand. I've heard this drill mentioned that you try and make sure you get high elbow. What I tend to prefer and think works much better is if you try and get the water, feel the water on the palm of your hand. So instead of trying to keep that elbow up and do this, what you try and do is just um, is try and feel the water on the palm of your hand to pull backwards, still getting that rotation in. The way to think about this drill is to get some rhythm into it. So as you're doing the doggy paddle drill, you try and visualize like you're pulling a longer rope. So you're trying to get that rhythm going in the stroke. Okay. What this one does, this generates a really good strong catch position because you're thinking about the water on the palm of your hand as it's coming back like this, it helps you generate a really good strong catch in the water. And the catch is simply where you catch the water and when you pull the water this way, that propels you forwards. So it's a really good drill for developing a really powerful swim stroke. So the side kick drill. So with side kick drill, what we're what uh, we're looking at here is to generate a good, nice, aligned body position in the water. So this time, this time we use the fins. Okay. So you put these on, and again, you're not going to kick really hard with these. You're just going to give yourself the ability to get a lot more propulsion through the water, and then concentrate on the position at the front end of the stroke. So how you do the 616 drill, with the fins on, you have um, one arm out in front and one arm by your side, okay? And what you're gonna do is you're gonna try and get your body onto its side. You wouldn't swim like this, but uh, I'll explain why you go onto your side in a minute. But one arm out in front and one arm by your side. One of the most important things with this drill is if the level of the water is about here, you don't have your hand on top of the water, you have your hand about six to eight inches below the level of the water. So instead of up there, you want to still be down there in this, um, this arm hand is a little bit lower in the water. So one arm there, one arm by your side. The way to help you get onto your side is to squeeze your shoulder blades together. So rather than being in this position, squeeze those shoulder blades together and it helps you to get onto your side. And all you do, you just maintain this position with your head looking down, maybe slightly forward. And then when you need to breathe, so you're just kicking away with your fins. When you need to breathe, twist your head to take in some air and then. And then you just maintain this position all the way down the pool. 
the reason why we go onto our side for this, you wouldn't swim like that, you wouldn't rotate completely onto one side then the other for swimming. But the reason why we do it is it el helps you to get into a really nice streamlined position down the pool. If you end up on your side like this, then you end up moving all over the pool and you can end up with a curved body position. So you end up swimming like that. What we try and do is get onto the side and a really nice strong position like this. When you've practiced this drill on your left side and then your right side, the progression of this is to move on to what we call the 616 drill, which is essentially just swapping down the pool from one side to the other. It's called 616 because in theory what you do is you're in this position, you kick six times or a kick of six, then one arm stroke and then a kick of six on the other side. I don't think it's really important that you actually count six kicks. It's more important to just spend some time on one side and then move to the other side and practice swapping between positions. What I don't want you to do is move too quickly. So I don't want you to do this, then this, then this. So, you know, maybe even count to five or six. One, two, three, four, five, and then swap to the other side. One, two, three, four, five, etc. So you don't really need to count your kick of six, but spending some time in one position, then swap into the others, the key to the 616 drill. One key thing for this, is the i'll do it from this side and then you can see is to make sure you breathe after the arm stroke okay so what you don't want to do when you do this drill is take a breath and then swap over because it 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 um means you lose the uh, um aligned position in the water so the way to do this drill which is the best way to do a demo here uh this side okay so what you do is you're in that side kick position, one arm in front, one arm beside. When you do 616, I'll do it from the front touch, it's easier. So you're in this position, you do the arm stroke, you flip to the side, and then you take a breath. Blowing bubbles out, exhaling under the water, swap to the side, take a breath. Taking the breath after the arm stroke means that you maintain that body position and that body alignment position in the water. If you take it before the, the arm stroke, then what happens is you lose that body position. So keep the body nice and aligned, swap over hands from one side to the other, take your breath, blow bubbles out. And then the other progression from that is 636. Again, you don't so cold because you're supposed to take six kicks, then you do three arm strokes. So one, two, three, and then you take the breath and uh, kick in of six on one side. One, two, three, kick of six on the other. Again, for me, it's not really important you count the six, it's just spend some time on your left side, three arm strokes, then take the breath, and then spend some time on the other side. So they're the key, the key drills that I regularly do to practice and could really help to improve your swim stroke. Okay, don't forget to click the subscribe button if you're liking these videos. It really does help the channel and it's really much appreciated. So just a little bit of advice when you're buying um, some fins or, or flippers. Um, it, it's good to get ones that are a little bit longer. You can get the ones that are quite short and stubby. But it's, le it's better to get ones that are a little bit longer that gives you that more propulsion. The main thing is to make sure that you don't get ones that are really rigid because it can be really harsh on your ankles. So try and get ones that are quite bendy. Uh, I mean, I use these Finnis floating fins. I'll put the link in the description. But these are the ones that I use and they've been fantastic. Um, they come in a various different colours depending on what size you want. Oh, and be wary that they're not a UK company. So just check the sizing is in uh, UK or US or wherever you're watching this just to make sure you order the right size.